All right. Hello, everyone. Paul Tranny here. Uh, welcome. Good to have you here. I'm going to go through my top five illustrator tips, top five things that uh, you need to know. So I'm going to probably, I'm definitely going to cover more than five, but these five are the ones that you need to know because they're going to save you time. So I'm going to move through this kind of quickly. I will uh, keep an eye on chat, but I also want to make sure that this is a uh, just a, a good recording and everything. So let's dive into this. Uh, Hamza and Andrea. Hey, Andrea. Hello. Fantastic, Isabel. Valour as well. Uh, Pal Palmina as well. Uh, Juan, fantastic. Portugal in the house. I always want to know where you're from. Laura, good to see you as well. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and uh, show you my screen. Just want to thank you all for joining me. And I want to hear from you as well. Uh, so here you can see Froja, it says top five, and I have about 30 tips right in here. Imagine that. <laughs> Right, 30 or I don't even know how many, but just so you know, I've weaved through uh, a lot of content and kind of got it narrowed down to the top five things that I do that help me work faster. So hopefully it will uh, as well for you, Mike from the Philippines, uh, Laura, of course, from Medellin. I always mention you when I think of Medellin. Ah, oh, love that place. All right. Yes, Andrea, I'm going live a little bit a little bit later. You can see a number of these tips and tricks. I'm just going to hide those, you know, not to worry. Uh, we're going to dive into all of those, uh, but let's start from scratch, shall we? Uh, fantastic. File new. I'm going to make this quick. Of course, we have these new document. We have templates, all that fun stuff. What do I have right here? I have something called all you need. So I typically set up this file because I constantly find myself having to uh, create new gradients and new color swatches and new things. So I gotta go find them in another document or I just set up this one template file. So that's what I have here. So if you don't, of course you're not gonna have this, but just create a blank file, okay? And I'll open up this all you need so you can see everything that it has. Uh, uh, Rol van Sabin from Ardenburg, the Netherlands. <laughs> Queensland in the house as well. So uh, again, this is a uh, template file that I already have set up. And look at all these swatches that I have. All this brushes, all this fun stuff. This is already set up. But I encourage you to jump in, you know, sort of, you know, pick a color, have a bunch of colors or whatever defined, uh, just like I'm doing right now, and then save this as a template file. You do that once, it's just gonna save so much time. Also, when I'm saving these colors, another thing I'm doing is I'm checking global, and that's checked by, um, <laughs> by default, but just make sure it is checked because that means uh, I could change it later and it will change it everywhere. Okay, so that's typically what I like to do. Click OK, boom, there it is. Uh, save as template. Okay, I usually tell people to do this, like, I set this one document up once, and then I just don't have to touch this stuff. And look at all those fun go goodies that are in there. Oh, look at this. Look at all these awesome brushes as well. Again, you set it up once, and you're good to go. So let's, let's kind of dive into this. Uh, another thing I'll typically do, and I'll nest this back over to the side, um, is, uh, and we'll put the swatches over here like that. Okay, and then I can start... Uh, designing. Uh, uh, you know, and honestly, like a lot of times, I don't even want this artboard. So I'll also hide the artboard. So that's another tip. Just hide artboards. Because typically when you're drawing and illustrating, maybe you don't want all of that, uh, that artboard to be there. It's still there. Okay, I can turn that on. Show artboards. Uh, command option. Option. H. Uh, and then we'll kind of get down to work. So I'm just going to go draw something out. I'm going to kind of dive into these first little tips as well. Uh, drawing this out. Uh, just a big rectangle. You'll see it come in. You get the idea. Anel, uh, good to join you. Sorry, I have not. Um, I need to respond to your email. Sorry, I have not yet, but I will. I'm going to dive into a couple other things because as I change this, let me just get rid of this drop shadow. Ah, which is kind of revealing another one of my tips and tricks. Uh, the second tip I always want to keep in mind is to use the properties panel, right? Which kind of seems straightforward, but if you've been using Illustrator for a while, 
often you you have your um, your stroke panel, you'll have your color panel, you'll have your swatches panel, you'll have all these different panels open, right? And your gradient panel. When you don't need that, you just need your one panel to rule them all, if you will. Because as I uh, select right in here, I don't need to have the swatches panel up directly from properties. I can change the color just like that. Okay, I'll even change this fill right over here to say a gradient to do something like that. You get the idea. Look, my gradients brings me to tip number three, uh, which is a freeform gradient tool. Okay, so hopefully you're aware of this radial linear and guess what freeform gradient. I'll click right here. Click. Watch what happens. If it's a rectangle, it will actually give you those four points. These four uh, color droplets that you can then change. So I would typically jump in here. Let's change this. This is like something a little simpler. RGB. Boom. You get the idea. Freeform gradient tool is what I'm working with. You like? Uh, always want to know if you have extra tips when it comes to gradients. I'm sure you probably do. But notice how I have this beautiful color as I kind of move this around. Uh, I can do this all day long as we throw in a splash of pink. Kind of like that. All right, uh, I could draw some more there to do all that fun stuff. Let's just change the color mode of this document and move on, shall we? Uh, fantastic. Tip number six, drink lots of water. <laughs> I love it, but uh, what are we doing here again is right over here with this properties panel, I'm able to access the gradient panel. It's baked within the properties panel. I can change this to lines, for instance. With that change, I can click and let's just change the color of this just so we can all see it. We'll change this to, sure, why not, yellow. Click, 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 and that's what, what, what I mean when I say a line. Okay, so again, edit gradients. We can edit those various points. We can see how that works. You get the idea, okay? So that's enough about the freeform gradient tool. Uh, I'll kind of eliminate uh, most of it. Really, I end up spending doing I end up doing this all day long. So let's just switch back over. Igor, good to have you here as well. Um, hiding artboards is something I do. Uh, sometimes I'll, I want to lock things down and draw some smooth lines. Let's just go ahead and lock that down and get into some more content. Things that you should know how to do, right? You should know how to, you know, sort of create a square in this case. Keeping this simple, just for the sake of this demo. Uh, click and drag, holding the option shift, right? Uh, once I make one duplication, I can then do command D. You get the idea. And I can make multiple versions, okay? You probably already know that, okay? Because that tip has been around since Illustrator 88, right? You feel me? So long ago, I must say. Okay, but let's take this a step further, by the way. I could do this. I can drag this down and do the same thing. Da, 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 da. You get the idea. Let's go beyond that because uh, amongst all these various tools, when we start creating a rectangle or a polygon or a star, we have additional options. So I can take this star tool. Um, and uh, what I could do is I could draw with the star tool. I'm just going to click and drag, right? And I can hold on the option key. When you hold on the option key, even before you're done creating, you have additional options. So notice how it's changing the the shape of that star right there. Another thing I could do is hit up up uh, up arrows and down arrows, and that changes it from a rectangle to a badge. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see that. I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see on the stream, uh, but I can go beyond that because I can hold down the tilde key. You ready for this? Let's just do this. Let's change this. Let's flip it. Let's uh, let's even do something extra fun. Give me one second because I want this to turn out pretty cool. Let's do this really fast. Hide artboards. Same concept. This time I'm going to hold down the tilde key. You ready for this? The tilde key. There we go. I just made 
uh, what looks like a pretty cool design. The tilde key, as you click and drag, will duplicate that object. Okay, so that's the tilde key. Been around since Illustrator 88, and you get the idea. Uh, greetings from Bangladesh. Good to have you here. Uh, hello from Germany as well. London. Mary McCarthy's in the house. Muriel, good to see uh, so many uh, good friends. And uh, you get the idea. Let's kind of go on from there. Um, other things that I do all the time, by the way. Ah, so many things I do all the time. Let me just open up a, another file that just has a lot going on. Let's go in here. Let's go in here to people. This people all file. Yeah, that's right. Created like 100 people right in here, right? Let's say I have uh, our Einstein character. And I want our Einstein character to actually... Uh, be in front of these other two characters right here, okay? Moving them over, creating my own scene like you do. Zoop, moving, ugh, moving them over. There we go. You can see I've actually used up so much room here. Um, I want to scale up. Maybe he's behind. Actually, I want to take her and I want to put her in front of everything else. So I want to make her larger. But I, if, I, if I scale her up, let's take a look at this. Illustrator, preferences, going into general right here. Uh, scaling stroke and effects. That's turned on. So what that means, if I scale her up, zoop, even though I want her to be in front, her stroke uh got scaled. So this doesn't look good as a design overall because this thickness is different than that thickness, right? So I want to take that down, boop, 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 bring it back to where it was, shrinking her down and turning that off. I'm going to show you another pro tip really fast. So turn off scale stroke and effect. So don't, don't scale those strokes. Now when I scale her up, she gets scaled up, but the uh, strokes don't, okay? So this is much better look what I'm going for in this particular situation as I start to add depth to this design, okay? Cool. Come on, Einstein, move over. I'm gonna show you something else, group. What if I show this, you ready for this? This is gonna blow your mind. Uh, yeah, Eric, I haven't been on Adobe Live. I feel so bad. Check this out. What if I want all of these strokes to be uh, uh, thicker or thinner? Okay, you ready for this, Nicole? Uh, but there's all these different size strokes, but the client comes back and says, no, I want these big, thick lines. I'm like, really? All the lines are different thicknesses, but you want them all, say, 200% thicker? Well, this is what you do there. Um, I'm gonna go into Illustrator, go to Preferences, same concept, scale, oh, actually, I'm gonna make sure this is turned off. So don't scale down the strokes, okay? Don't scale them down. Keep the strokes the same size. I shrink it down 50%. Guess what? The strokes just got 200% bigger because I scaled it down. Okay, boom, there it is, right? Um, from there, now what I wanna do is I wanna turn that back on, which is gonna be scale stroke of NFX. I scale it back up to its original size. And now I've scaled all of those strokes proportionately, which is a huge dip. So you get the idea. Write it down, this is actually being recorded as well. Uh, I don't know if I did a whole lot of favors for this particular design. <laughs> I probably need to move them back. But look at what's happening here. Here's, a, here's my other like favorite tip as well. Uh, in fact, let's just revert this really fast because I have a lot of colors going on here. And uh, what if I want to have some consistency with all of these colors, at least for all these different backgrounds? How many different background colors are there? I don't know. Shoot, I don't know. I'm gonna go into edit, edit colors, and recolor artwork. Okay, so Nicole, do you know about recolor artwork? CC, do you know as well? Click. 
We could recolor artwork all day long and it's super fun. We can lock this down and I can be like, boop, boop, boop. You get it. You get the idea. Adjust, adjust, make it all. Should be able to make these all uh, darker as well. Just like that, darkening up everything. You get the idea. So that's what I'm doing, but I have so many different colors. Maybe I want to try Renaissance. I could try all these different things. Really what I want is I want like um, maybe five colors and not 50. Because look, all of these colors look very close to the same color. But I'm like, no, I want them to all be that dusty pink which is <laughs> uh, which is so hot right now. Coral, coral being that hot color. All right, Jasmine wants to wants to see some boop boop boops. That's my action noise that I need to do right now. So check th this out. All right, just make sure everything's up and running. Uh, going in here, going in here to auto, I'm going to take this down to four colors. It deduces all of those into four colors. If I say this, um, this is actually pretty good, uh, but these are individual colors. I could move these colors around. I could, I could take a look at this as a whole and say, hey, you know what? Actually, I need to change a lot of these, to be honest with you. Let's do something like that. Uh, let's make um, more yellows teal like that is what I'm doing here. Let's have some more uh, reds. Let's go down like that. I'm actually adding more reds as well. So it, uh, you get the idea. That's kind of what's going on. But I'm deducing all those, all those different colors to the top four because it's gonna be an easier print job. Seafoam green, oh yeah, right? And again, we can come in here, we can get these fancy colors, zoop. We can play with these all day long as I start to adjust them further, click OK. Now I have like a four color print job or whatever, okay? Turning on my characters, here they are. Here's all my basic shapes, by the way. And just these simple ones down here. After I've created all these characters, guess what? I've created a number of artboards. Here they are. How many do I have? A hundred, 101. 100 characters, okay, 101 artboards, because I have one artboard that contains all of them. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, so, so that's what I would do, is I actually start creating these artboards and placing them all over the place, right? I want to create a new artboard. I can draw one out. Zoop, there's my new artboard, just like that. Okay, I can see the size right up here. It's just like creating a shape. You get it. Okay, what you can do uh, with the art tools, artboard tool selected, I can go in here to rearrange all is a, another thing I'll do. Taking all of these artboards and rearranging them in uh, rows and columns of five, okay, with 10 points in between. And that's how I get this. I end up getting this uh, beautiful boop layout as you see right here. What do I want to do from here? Check this out. I'm, I'm actually kind of, I'm following these tips, by the way. Let's turn them on. Boop. There we are. Why so many sound effects today? Uh, hiding artboards. Uh, I can draw smooth lines. I'm, I'm going to actually define each one of these, by the way, because I'm giving you my top five. We're down here with recoloring artwork, by the way. Ah, so many. So many tips. I have more than five, but I think some I can just consider um, subcategories. This one I haven't done yet. I like hard hiding artboards. This this all goes with like shortcuts. There we are. Create your own starter template. We started out with that, but we'll go one, two, three shortcuts, and then we'll get into some bonus features as well. Uh, but let's go beyond that. Um, I wanted to export out things because right down here, oh, so many things to show you. Um, exporting out content, window, asset export. Okay, so I only have to set this up typically once, but I can take these graphics 
like this character right up here and drop it in. Oops, let's ungroup that. Let's group them together. Let's drop them into this asset export panel. And now I can export out this character. The cool thing is this character is going to be, is linked back to this graphic. So it's a live link. If I decide to change the color of the hat, for instance, to yellow, if I can change it to yellow or green, help me, help me. There we go, let's go up here, boop. There we go, it changes it over here, right? We can see that and then I end up exporting out all of these assets as as at once as SVG files, ping files, whatever the case may be. So I just set that up typically once. Uh, notice you could also export uh, for screens. So I can export out all of these graphics via screens and be good to go there. So that's already kind of set up. Uh, yes, it's all about the basics. Vicky says, uh, the video tips, it's amazing. You use it every day, but you still go back to the basics and the fundamentals and the little things that you do uh, that makes life easier, right? Uh, what if we want to give this guy some cool hair, right? Let's go into this. Getting down to our last couple tips, by the way, because I've been going for a little while. Uh, let's go ahead and hit N for pencil, double click, pencil tool. Let's make sure it is set to smooth from accurate to kind of lame to smooth, right? So now when I draw lines like his flowing hair from down here, zoop, it's going to give me a few points as opposed to a lot of points. Brrr, look at how many points. You get the idea. Okay, so I, I set that to smooth. I come in here, I draw out the hair. I can get rid of that previous one right here. So many tips I want to show you. So many. Right? Let's do this. D Dominica, you ready for this, Dominica? Um, I'm going to uh, use the width tool, which is going to adjust the stroke width. Okay, so I'm going to make the end of the hair pointy because that's what hair should look like. It should be kind of more like, like that. Okay, so I have that set up. That's looking pretty good. Let's just cap the end of that line just for fun. Um, and this is pro tip number six. I apologize. But anytime I draw a new line, it defaults back to the one point line. I don't need that. No, I already spent all this time drawing out this line, okay? So I wanna continue to draw with this appearance. So that's why you wanna go into the appearance panel, click right here. This is gonna seem kind of confusing, but this is very important. New art doesn't have basic appearance, so uncheck this. If you're drawing lines many different times, new art has uncheck. It does no longer have basic appearance. It's a double negative. It's confusing, right? But now when I draw, I get his sweet flowing hair and I don't have to change that stroke each and every time. Okay. Uh, so that's all you need to know there. It's that little hidden option. You get the idea. Um, and so full of so many good things. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna wind down with one more fun tip just for artistic purposes, by the way. Just because I can, let's do something fun. Because this'll just be kind of cool to work with. Let's grab an image. Let's grab this image right here. Let's embed it, right? You think most of the effects under the are under the effects menu. You'd be wrong, uh, Dennis and Andrea, because check this out. Do you know about this? Object, create object mosaic, because what I want to do is I want to create some cool little, ooh, draw inside's fun too, cool uh, squares that make up this image. But I'm going to create an object mosaic, uh, it will be 20 by 20. These are the, the tiles, so the number of tiles, the new size. Um, you get the idea. 
Um, and I'm going to click OK. And obviously, you can see what it does. It actually gives me all of these various squares that can be moved around as well. So I don't know. That's just kind of what I wanted to end with, something kind of fun, uh, just so you know, just to inspire you. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you, Sarah. Th Sarah, that... Un that appearance button is pretty important. Uh, Tom, if you're doing that a lot, drawing inside, it's like having a clipping mask, if you will, um, uh, which is awesome. And uh, again, hopefully this inspires you for doing any sort of like pixel art. Um, how do you make round corners and squares? So easy. Sorry, I missed this earlier. You know, oftentimes, you know, it doesn't, it almost doesn't even matter that I have these three options, rectangle, rounded, ellipse. No, I'll just use rectangle. Let's come in here, Joop. draw out my square. From there, I will use the direct select tool, selecting these opposing corners. I get this control point, and now I can curve in uh, those corners, and that's how you make uh, rounded corners in squares. I'm just making kind of a more fun shape, by the way. Right over here, we'll just flip it, and now we're starting with a nice little flower, as you can tell. Uh, like we mentioned with the star tool, we could do the same thing. As I drag this out, up arrow, add more points. Guess what? Let's round all those corners. Zoop. There we have our fun flower. That's a different color, and you get the idea. So thanks so much for hanging out with me, everybody. Sorry, I was a little long-winded. Started out with top five tips, ended up being top 50. I would say this is tip number seven, uh, but thanks so much for joining me. Um, Becca, sorry I didn't get your question about the working with the blend tool. The, the tilde key isn't gonna work. The blend tool is, we'll have to talk about that. The, the tilde with the blend tool. I'd have to really see what you're trying to do to answer that question. Uh, um, it looks like we do have a question from David. Um, if you have, you, you lost a lot of your controls up at the top, up here at the very top, well, it's gonna be this option right up the top window. Let's zoom in. Control bar is missing. So turn on control and that'll bring back this control bar for you since it might be missing. All right. Or maybe you just, maybe your CC subscription isn't up to date. Just kidding. But I do want to thank you for hanging out with me, Afroja, and Bert, and Sarah, and Dominica, and everyone. Um, yeah, uh, so that's all I got for you. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more. I will be back next week with some fun things, and I'm glad you like those bonus tips on like using a mosaic and everything. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day or night or evening, wherever, uh, wherever the stream might find you, and go give somebody a hug unless they're being creepy. And I'm back. <laughs> so thanks so much, everyone. That means it's time to go. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.